He'd uh, been battling shingles, and we appreciate him doing what he can do. I'll tell you what, the foundation will tell the whole story, won't it? It's the foundation we have never, in all of our times, uh, somebody come to this church for the first time, uh, stand this morning and said, boy, it's nice in here. He was looking around here. Uh, we've had, never had a compliment. I, Jeremy's got a new house, newer house, not very old. Jeremy, I'm sure folks has come to your house and said, this is a pretty house. They base the side of your house on the siding, on the interior, by the lights and all like that. Has everybody come to anybody ever come to your house yet and said, boy, you got a pretty footer out there? <laughs> no, sir. The footer don't get bragged on. The footer, you know, don't get praise or honor or glory. But I tell you what, that footer, that foundation Whoa. is what kept us. Praise the Lord forever. Lord. And without it, when we gotta have our mind made up, it, it don't matter. Uh, they have been times in my 15 plus years as, as pastor here. I was sharing with the brother this week. He come to talk to me. And I told him, I said, buddy, you just got to make sure you're where God wants you. I said, when the church up there contacted me as pastor in 97, wanted me to come up. And I said, let's pray about it. Finally, I told him about six months later, I ain't the man. But down deep inside, I knew I got up, I, I said, I probably made more failures than I have good. But I got up from my knees up there in that old dirty cellar behind the house with my mind made up to come up here. And the pastor, listen, even though my feelings got hurt, even though I had to go when I didn't feel like going, but I said, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Back in 1979, when I come over here, uh, but Tammy and I was married folks I'll tell you what I was in worse financial, financial shape than anybody that's ever gotten married I believe I was in I, 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 I didn't have the money to get married but that's what I wanted to do and boys when we got our mind made up we'll make it blessed oh. be the name of the Lord the winds may come Lee and oh. the rains oh. may fall and we'll have bad times but Lord, I'm going to see heaven one of these days, Jeremy. I don't want no shortcut. I've tried shortcut. You build a house, listen, more than one benefit. You better build it right. Why? Because if you decide to sell that place, unless somebody's got the money, which is very unlikely to pay cash, I don't like it. When we bought our place down there, we wanted that place. But you know what? The bank sent out somebody. Listen, uh, they didn't look at the outside and say, it's a pretty nice looking place. Uh, they bypassed the windows and the doors and all like that. First thing they wanted to do was get under that house uh, and see what it was sitting on. Uh, Listen, that's the way the devil run it. Comes at us. Listen to me. He'll come and he'll go for our, our foundation trying to make us day. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if any of you's got Jim Walter homes or not, but back when I was growing up, uh, Daddy, he was particular. We started building our house, and man, things had to be right. It, there was an old house on the property where he built his house, and, and, and I said, man, Dad, let's torch that thing. <laughs> he said, no, son, we're going to tear that thing down. Get us some lumber out of it. We're going to build us a shanty. Well, I kept complaining, kept a fussing, and, and, and kept a griping. Daddy said, go get the gas can. <laughs> we burnt that sucker down, got it out of the way. Daddy said, there was a lot of lumber there I could have saved and salvaged to build us a shanty out of to, to uh, uh, get in from the shelter while we was building our house. But Dad, we'd dig, and I'd say, Dad, why don't you just pour that footer on top of the ground? The ground's level. He said, son, that won't work. That won't work. And we dug about six inches. And I said, that's plenty, Dad. That, that six inches of concrete's a plenty. No, but I ain't down far enough. Listen to me. That house is still standing. Hey. And it's about, um, they built that new store at Golly Bridge Kroger. I tell you, I never got so aggravated in my life. We was up there. Man, that thing was pretty. They built in a swamp on the riverbank up there and uh, had to fill that swamp in. They put down, supposed to put down three foot of rock. 
And then I think it was a foot of dirt, another three foot of rock. They went down in glass coat and started hauling that fly, shelling that plant, Roy, and brought it up there. I said, my goodness gracious, Bill, oh, it'll work, it'll work if it's packed in good. Well, they started fudge, and the owners uh, got in a hurry. He wanted that rent money. You know, he had done went in debt for a big old building that he was going to lease to Kroger. Well, they got it built ahead of time, but listen, it wasn't but about two or three months uh, after that store had opened. You go in there, and I've been back there many a times. I would come home black and blue. I'd be standing in front of that meat case, filling the meat case up, and a runaway buggy had come down from aisle one. That thing was sinking and going in the river. I'd be there, have my mind on my work. Ain't been more babies run over in that store. Why? Because they got in a hurry on the foundation, and the building wasn't strong anymore. Old brother uh, uh, Garfield, uh, James Garfield, preacher of a long time ago, he was president of Hiram College, and I've thought about this a hundred times. Uh, the first time I read it, said there was a wealthy man come in there to Hiram College one time. Said, uh, Mr. Garfield, said, I got this boy here. And uh, he said, this boy has trouble with schoolwork. Said he, had, he don't have a very long attention span. And, and uh, he don't like school that well. He said, it don't matter what it costs. You just name me a price. And I'll lay it out here. Say, get him a quick diploma. Say, get him through school quick. And uh, Brother Garfield said, well, I'll do what you want. Said, uh, we could sure use the money. He said, but let me explain something to you. He said, God, it takes him about a hundred years to get an oak tree mature. He said, he can grow a squash in about three months. What do you want him to be, a squash or an oak tree? Yeah, and that's what people do. Give me the quickie. I ain't got to listen. Zach, I ain't got time to read. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to pray. Yeah, just give me a dose of old time religion. I want it real quick. Boy, it's a growing process. It's a maturing process. He's still working on me, Lee. He's still working on me. I don't know it all yet. I ain't where I want to be. I ain't close enough to him. But I got a heart to serve him. When I first started out, I didn't think that I would make it all the way. But I had a heart to serve him. That's what kept me. I made mistakes. He picked me up and brushed me off and set me back up. Boy, I'm glad for the chief cornerstone is wrong. He said, would you stand with me? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord won't always call either. Come on, Richard. We won't get saved just whenever we want to. But we, the only time we can be saved is when the Lord calls us. Yes. And I've said this before. If I've said it once, I've said it probably a thousand times. If I was in this building this morning and I knew I was lost and I didn't feel the Lord calling me, I'd run to the altar anyway and beg the Lord to speak to my heart, Terry. Yes. I would beg Him to call my name yes. and know without a shadow of a doubt. I've seen people, as Ronnie said, come to the Lord. Why? Because we had a revival one time up there above Golly Bridge. It was 120, over 125 people saved. And listen, I would be safe in saying today that we would be fortunate or lucky to go back to those 125 and most of them was teenagers, 16 to 21 years old. Uh, that Practically at that time, half of Golly Bridge High School got saved in that revival. Listen, and we go back, Lee, and I would hope that 25 out of that 125 plus we're still on fire for the Lord. Listen, we would probably be lucky if that many of them were still. Why? Because a lot of them come because their buddy came. A lot of them come because their girlfriend or boyfriend came. But oh, Lee, I know some of them. Listen, that come because they've seen themselves lost. Now I'm done without the Savior. Yes, yes. Seen themselves on, the, on their way to a devil's hell and cried out for mercy. And God wonderfully yes. saved us. Have you ever had battles? Oh, sure, yeah. had battles. Yeah. Did you ever feel like a failure almost every day? Oh, yeah. But I, I purposed in my heart that I'm going to see Jesus oh, one of these yes. days. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we come before you. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for how that you've blessed. 
Thank you, Lord, for how that you took care of us. We've not kept ourselves. We've not walked this walk, Lord, in our own power and in our own mind. And Lord, if we try to do so, we'll not make it. Oh, Father, the first thing, as Ronnie said, the first thing to dig in that footer is saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me my sins. That'll get us on the rock. That'll get us down, Lord, where we can start building up. And I ask, Lord, this morning that you would just give somebody courage to say, Lord, I want the foundation. I don't want, listen, I'm not concerned about all the things that, that people might boast about or all, all the things that people might notice and brag. But I want something, Lord, that, that I know is there when all the friends have gone. Oh, yes. When the storms come, I know without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, that I'm built on a rock, that I'm built on a firm foundation. Yes. Yes. And I'll be able to stand the test and the trials and the burdens and all the fiery darts that the enemy throws at me. I'll be able to stand firm. Yes. Lord, that's what we need this morning. We can run to an altar, Lord. And all we we'll want the joys of the Lord. We we'll want the new feeling as Ronnie was talking about. But it's going to take more than that. It's going to take a firm foundation to build this spiritual house on. So Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you would give somebody the courage to say, now my eyes have been opened. I, 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 I may be able to talk the talk. And I may, able, may be able to walk the walk. And I might be able to kind of put on the show. But with me the way I am right now, it won't happen. So I realize that I'm going to have to dig in and ask for mercy and grace and forgiveness. I need to ask the Lord to save me and build a brand new house build a brand new structure one that will stand the test of time oh, yes. so Father I ask that you would just give somebody the courage right now to slip out of the seat come down to this altar and say Lord have mercy for me a sinner there's many in this building this morning I was one of those Lord that didn't have the courage to make it to the altar but I knelt down at my seat where I sat some has prayed in their houses. Some has prayed outside. Some has prayed at the stump of an old tree. Lord, there's nothing in this altar this morning. It's a place set aside that people can pray. But it's wherever our heart is, Lord, there we can find our altar. So, Lord, as we would sing a verse and a chorus of song, give somebody the courage to come. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. That's what you gotta say. Ah uh -huh. 
You may be seated. 